When planning a study, you usually make some sort of power calculation to calculate the probability of getting significant results under certain assumptions. And the power calculation is often used to dimension the study to make sure that you have a study large enough to show significant results provided that the effect you are looking for is actually there. In R, there are a few ready-made power functions to calculate the power of specific statistical tests. For example, the power t-test, which calculates the power of a t-test. You use it by providing the power t-test with the assumptions that you make about the effect size, that's delta, the standard deviation in the two groups that you are comparing, the power and the type of uh, test you're going to perform a two sample or one sample test. As you can see you have these parameters and by simply omitting one of them the power t-test will return that one. So if for example you would like to have a power of 80 percent then you would simply omit the n which is the group size and R would return this information the data that you have provided and n which is the group size in each group and you're supposed to have two groups because you're performing a two sample t-test there are similar power calculation functions for the proportional test and the ANOVA analysis of variance but there is a better way of uh, calculating the power of a study, I think, and more fun too. And um, let's first think about what the power calculation really does and what power is. To calculate the power of a study, you need to make a lot of assumptions about the effect size and the distribution in the samples that you will draw. And provided that these assumptions are correct, you will get significant results at the significant level that you have decided, which is also part of the assumptions for, um, in a certain proportion of all studies you perform, if you would perform the study a large number of times. And that proportion is really the power. So what you're Calculating is the probability of getting significant results, provided that all your assumptions about the study that you opt to perform are correct. Since this is the definition of power, it would of course be possible to model the study outcome a large number of times, that is to simulate the, the study itself for example, 10,000 times, and then calculate the proportion of all these runs that give you significant results, and then you would have the power. This is easily done in R, since R has great capabilities of um, simulating things, including entire studies. So, as you can see here, the idea is to create a large number of samples that fulfill all the criteria that you had defined your assumptions. You then expose these samples to the statistical test you would want to use and you're not restricted to any particular test but you can use basically anything here. Not only the t-test but any test that you would be able to perform in the real study you can also perform when calculating the power. And then you simply collect all the p-values from these studies and check what proportion of them are below your threshold of significance and that's the study power. So let's look at an, an example. Here we want to compare two groups of unequal size. 80 individuals in one group and 40 in the second group. In these groups you assume a normally distributed outcome with a mean value of 10 in the first group and 15 in the other group and the standard deviation of 10 in both groups. And you want 
not to use the t-test but the man with new test or rather the wilcox test the unpaired wilcox test so what power would we get we start by declaring the variable p and giving it the value null this is necessary because we want to add things to p later on and uh, therefore it needs to exist but we don't want it to contain anything that can be achieved by writing p equals null we then start a for loop with 10,000 rotations and the index variable i so this is what is to be done 10,000 times over and over again we start by defining the first sample a according to your assumptions a normally distributed sample 80 observations mean 10 and standard deviation of 10 and you you calculate the group b the second group next thing is to perform the test itself upon these two samples random samples the wilcox test and we extract the p value as you have seen previously and store it in p or we actually add it to p we take the value of p and we then add the new p value and since this is part of a loop this will happen 10000 times and you will in the end end up with a p containing 10000 p values one for each run of this um, simulated study and after closing the loop here we simply calculate the length of p where the results are significant that is the number of significant results divided by the total number of studies that is 10,000 and we get 0.70 in other words the power of this study will be 70 percent and if that's not sufficient for us then we would have to increase the study size and try again to see what power we get